so without further ado, uh, we're going to kick things off uh, with a project called Before Our Time. Uh, David and Timur, would you mind uh, joining me? Hi. Hi. How's it going? It's going really well. Excited to hear your presentation. So uh, why don't you go ahead and share your uh, your screen and, and take it away. Sure. Looking good, whenever you're ready. Great. Hi, I'm producer David Cameron, coming to you from uh, the Andes of Peru. And I'm here with director Timur Musabe, uh, who's in Toronto, to introduce a project we're developing. Every good story begins with a great mystery, and our project embraces one of the greatest mysteries of our time, our own history on this planet. Over the past decade, we've begun to learn that a mere 13,000 years ago, the Earth was struck by a massive cataclysm, likely caused by large-scale debris from a comet or even a solar outburst. Researchers say that this event spread over a huge portion of the globe, melting the Laurentide ice sheet, raising the sea level by over 100 meters, scorching the earth and causing tidal floods around the world, obliterating life as we know it. Is it a coincidence that nearly every culture shares a myth, myth about massive flood that destroyed the earth? What would be left of a civilization that existed before this event? The world is riddled with ancient ruins. Many of them share mounting evidence suggesting that they are much older than what modern history has taught us and that they may have been subjected to a cataclysmic series of events in our relative recent past on a scale we can barely imagine. The more I learned about these sites, the more I felt misled by the current narrative. I felt a profound and passionate spiritual connection in their presence that beckoned me to question their origins. We hope to invoke these same feelings as we introduce our audience to evidence that these sites may have been built upon remnants of an even older site or sites, possibly created by a previous civilization that came before our time. Before Our Time is a non-linear, six-off, documentary-style XR experience that investigates this evidence at five ancient sites using photogrammetric reconstructions of the ruins, along with 3D, 360 imagery, and traditional media. But it's more than just Google Earth VR for ancient ruins. Our narrative proposes that evidence of a previous civilization can be found by examining key facets of each site. Many sites, for example, show signs of catastrophic damage, Often, the oldest stonework shows this damage, while the youngest does not. Other sites appear to have been built with such vastly different styles of construction that they may have been built in different epochs and by different cultures, with newer cultures inheriting and building upon older megalithic sites. To begin our investigation, we're building a prototype application with Unity that reconstructs the sites of Incaltambo and Kenko near the city of Cusco, Peru. The app combines volumetric exploration guided by narration and voiceover commentary from researchers and academics. We want to provide viewpoints from all sides of the story in a way that gets people thinking about the evidence and contrasting it to conventional wisdom. As with 2019's The Holy City, virtual explorers can expect to be able to investigate the sites in sixth off, examine stonework, and interact with artifacts, while also listening to insight from experts and music from world-renowned spiritual artists. And now, here's a short trailer. Hi, I'm David Cameron, founder of Inverse Cinematic Reality and a virtual reality content creator from Vancouver, Canada. For the past eight months, I've been filming, photographing, and scanning some of the world's most enigmatic ruins. I'm driven by the evidence and the advice from experts that suggests there's more going on here than we currently understand, that the existing theories aren't necessarily supported by the existing evidence. I believe that by allowing more people to view the evidence for themselves, that it opens the discussion to a wider variety of people and a more diverse set of backgrounds. That's why we're developing an app that allows you to explore this evidence for yourself. To accomplish this, we've teamed up with Toronto-based virtual reality developer Occupied VR. Over the past five years, Occupied has been delivering some of the most exciting world-class VR experiences, and we're excited to bring the same level of quality they've become known for with your support, we can bring the Before Our Time app to your desktop and virtual reality headset, providing you with the tools to gain virtual first-hand experience at some of the world's most ancient sites. Along with our partners at Occupied, we bring a highly talented team to the project with years of experience on award-winning projects and with such clients as David Cronenberg, Ridley Scott, Vice, and Samsung. 
Having raised an initial 20,000 Canadian, we recently completed principal photography for the prototype with over 25,000 images captured, as well as extensive 3D 360 video. We're looking to raise an additional 80,000 to complete the prototype and bring a fully explorable experience to desktop VR and standalone headsets. Beyond this, we're looking to raise 450,000 Canadian to bring the experience of five ancient sites to a fully commercial project. We hope to compete with other VR exploration apps such as National Geographic Explorer, while adding a strong narrative presence that goes beyond what these apps offer. We're also looking for distribution partners with experience in this type of content and exhibition partners who see an opportunity for our content in their venue. In short, we're looking to tell a story of what might just be the greatest lost history of our time. And we hope you'll join us on the adventure. Thank you. All right, uh, decision makers, we've got, uh, it looks like four folks on the line, Lauren Blank, uh, Mark, uh, Milo, if you wouldn't mind uh, uh, turning your video on, asking any questions you might have of these artists. Hey, Mark, good to see you, buddy. What's up, Blake? Uh, so thoughts, questions, things that needed uh, clarification, areas that shined. Um, I, I love the work. Uh, or the idea and concept behind what you're doing, but I'm su and I'm super kind of curious where your the, your research comes from and and kind of your basis for the project. Um, a lot of the research comes from, uh, uh, I guess, uh, what's called the Comet Research Group, um, which is a, a, a sort of a fellowship of of sixty or seventy academic professionals that have proposed that, uh, you know, over the past decade have begun to propose through their literature and their academic papers that um, there was a, uh, you know, a comet that hit um, the earth, not in one giant, you know, comet, but actually broke apart in fragments and caused this global catastrophe 12,800 years ago, uh, resulting in a period of time known as the Younger Dryas. Um, and so that was sort of the, the genesis for the project was, was just the shift in thinking what we'd learned in history that, you know, the last major cataclysm on earth was the dinosaurs, but, but actually it's not, it's quite more recent in our history. And it's only in the last couple of years that it's really, the literature has really begin to solidify in the mainstream um, that yes, this, it really seems that there was a cosmic impact um, at this period of time, 12,800 years ago. Uh, and there's a, a fairly large, wide agreement between a lot of professionals now that this happened. So when I visited uh, Lebanon and um, the Middle East and Peru and started looking at these sites, these ancient sites, um, and talking with um, locals and natives and people who'd done independent research on these, um, you know, I would say Graham Hancock was a, was a big influence. Um, you start seeing some of the discrepancies that, that just don't add up to the conventional narrative. Uh, for example, it's a lot of the um, Incan sites, the sites attributed to the Inca, uh, you see a, a layering of, of types of construction. So you see very simple brickwork, uh, which, you know, looks like anyone of this age could build it quite easily. But then you see the older megalithic brickwork, stonework where there's jigsaw walls put together in such an amazing way where you have 80 to 100 ton stones fit together in 3D geometry with such precision and no mortar whatsoever that you have to wonder if the Inca built both of these things, you know, why were they, the, why is there such poor craftsmanship on, on the majority of their work, but there's such master craftsmanship on this larger work and then you go even older than that, and there's 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 stone shaping right into the me right into the bedrock itself, which looks like it even comes from an older epoch. You know, you see the aging and weathering on these stones that's even older than than the jigsaw walls. And you have to wonder, well, if the Inca built all of this, if they had the technology to shape stone and to create these amazing um, stone monuments uh, that are megalithic. Uh, why did they resort to building such, you know, generic sort of general walls and terraces around the country? It really seems, you know, that, that, that there were different cultures um, involved here and that because of the oldest stone shows so much damage to it, you know, some of it's cracked right in half, some of it is melted, some of it has intense heat damage and scorching on it. 
Um, some of it has tremendous earthquake damage, like at Machu Picchu, you see, you see the, the buildings, the oldest stonework broken apart, you know, from what could only be, you know, described as a nine or 10 earthquake. Um, and those parts of the site are broken apart, but the sites with the typical Inca style stonework that isn't that impressive, none of that's broken apart. So you have to wonder if there was an earthquake of a magnitude 10, why didn't the newer stonework break apart and this older megalithic stuff break apart? There's just, these types of questions come up and it just makes you wonder, you know, if one culture built all this stuff, it doesn't make sense. So that's kind of the genesis for the project is bringing these bits of evidence that you find by visiting the sites that make you just kind of like, hmm, now that I've seen this, I can't really unsee it. You know, I'm, I'm questioning what I grew up learning I'm questioning what the what the narrative used to be, um, because there's a lot of new evidence now that when you see it for yourself, just um, makes you really question the existing narrative. Does that answer I do question? think the, uh, the 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 pleasure and excitement of seeing it for yourself is the key of the project. Yes, uh, we've absolutely. got time for one more quick question. If anyone has one. Yeah, I've, well, I've got an observation first, and then and then a question. My observation would be that um, this does uh, a lot of things that VR is very good at. You know, it kind of inspires that sense of wonder um, and allows us to sort of peep into hidden worlds, I suppose. Um, and it can also, uh, it's, all, it's very good at doing awe. As soon as, as soon as you move into sort of ancient sites and really sacred sites, you know, that could be really awe inspiring. So it could be an amazing experience. Um, and my other observation is that the time is right for this kind of a thing. Like people are see seeking answers for all kinds of things, really. Um, and uh, there's definitely going to be an audience for this. And I think they would be prepared to pay to have this experience because the people who are into this kind of stuff uh, tend to be very into it and they seek it out um, and they're highly motivated. Um, from my point of view, I, I work as a curator with a documentary festival, CPH Docs, and a science festival in Germany called Zilbersalz. And if we're ever faced with something like this, then what we would want to know straight up is uh, who are the academics that you're working with? Um, what's the science there? Uh, who are the historians, the archaeologists, etc.? Uh, and that would be a very important aspect for us if we were to consider um, including it in either of those events. So seeing perhaps a partnership with a, a few key academics that you could research and, you know, do back, you know, your own, make your own assessment of, is that what you're saying, Mark? Absolutely. When we, um, when occupied, we just completed a project called the Holy City, in which we went to Jerusalem and it's an inter interactive nonlinear documentary exploring the three Abrahamic religions. And we stand, uh, like, Al-Aqsa, the Dome of the Rock, the Western Wall, the Tomb of Jesus, the Holy Sepulchre, the tunnels underneath. I mean, basically 15 diff of, of lo different locations there. And one thing that was of prime importance was to speak with uh, the religious heads. Like, I met with the Imam at Al-Aqsa. He ex like, I, we basically, all three of the Abrahamic religions, we um, spoke with academics. We formed really close partnerships. And uh, we tested it on them. We took their insights. And um, uh, it's very, very important to be uh, fact factual and uh, not just, uh, um, you know, it's not just hearsay and to keep everything very academic when dealing with academic subject matters such as this. So we do hold that very, very close to the project. Wonderful. Thank you, Timur, and thank you, David. Uh, really interesting project, uh, and excited to see the demo as soon as it's done.